Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you what's new in Reaper 6. Now, when we first open Reaper, we'll notice there's a new theme, a Reaper 6 theme. And we can see it right here. Now, if you prefer the older themes, we could still use those if we go to the options menu, go to themes, and just choose either three, four, or five, or classic, or just use the default in Reaper 6, which looks like this. Now, there's a few behaviors that go with this theme. First, you'll notice we don't see as many controls on the track control panel. That's by design. In order to see the record input, the record mode, and the input monitoring, we need to first go into record on the track. And here we see the input monitoring, the input, and the record mode. This is purposely hidden to make the track look cleaner. Go out of record, and we see less controls. Go back in, and we see more. And also, by default, input monitoring is now turned on. So when we go into record, we're going to automatically hear the input through that track. Previously, it was off by default. But you can still change it by clicking to off or change the default in the preferences. Now, if you want to see all the controls, even when we're not in record, we could adjust all this in the theme adjuster, which is also new in Reaper 6. So you can go to the options menu, go to themes, and choose theme adjuster right here, which opens up this dialog where we can see we have three layouts, A, B, and C, to choose from, so we can have different tracks look differently based on their layout. The default is A, and we can see right down here, it's going to hide the monitoring, the record mode, and the input if the track is not armed. If we don't want that behavior, we can just turn it off right here and see all the controls all the time. Or you could just use Layout B, which is already set up for that behavior. And in here, we could change a lot of other things. We could also change our volume size from a knob to a fader, like this, and adjust the size of it. We could change the input size, the name size, and the meter size. So we could see our meters a lot bigger along with the location of the meter, on the right or the left. And we could also change how the mixer looks in this dialog. Again, having a separate layout, A, B, and C, for the different tracks. And from the theme adjuster, we could also choose our colors. If we go here, we could choose custom colors with different palettes to choose from. So we could choose a track, Choose a palette, choose a color, and it applies that color to that track. And we can recolor with that palette right from here. So it randomizes the colors. Let's try the pride colors, or the cool colors, or the eek colors, which are really bright. And if they're too bright, we could dim them right from here. Just make them as dim as we want. But keep in mind, the theme adjuster is only going to work with the Reaper 6 theme. It's not going to work with the others. Now we could also move our track control panel over here to the right side. Just right click down here and choose Show Track Control Panel on right side of a range. And now it shows up over here instead. We'll still see the music over here, but the track control panel is on the right side. And we can move it back right from here. And now it's on the left side. Now we could also embed our effects in the track control panel using the Reaper plugins. So let's add an effect to this track. Let's choose the Reaper ones. Re EQ, which looks like this. We could adjust 
our frequencies from here. And then we can also adjust them in the track control panel. Just select the effect and right click it and choose show embedded user interface in track control panel. And that puts it over here as well. So now we can close this and still see the EQ over here. And it resizes when we change the height of our track. We can adjust the frequencies right from here instead of having to open them up over here each time. So let's add another one for rear comp right here. Right click, show embedded user interface in track control panel. And now it shows up over here. So we can readjust our threshold from here, hold on shift to readjust the wet. Hold on Alt on the PC or option on the Mac to readjust the ratio. And of course, we can see it at all times, even when the effects window is closed. And readjust it from here. And we can also see it in the mixer. Open this back up, go to Re-EQ and right click it, and choose Show Embedded User Interface in the Mixer Control Panel. Let's do the same thing with the compressor. Open up the mixer. And now we can see it in here. To readjust our EQ, our compressor, the ratio, or any of the Reaper effects we choose. But it'll also work with JS plugins that have a graphic interface. For example, let's delete all these and let's add the Mega Baby sequencer right over here, which is where we can create a step sequencer in Reaper. Just click to create MIDI notes or draw some. But we can also see this in the track control panel. Again, just right click it, show embedded user interface in the track control panel, and now it shows up right over here. We can draw in any notes we want to play. And it's going to trigger those notes when we hit play on the transport. But we can always see them right from here. Pretty helpful. And we can also change how we see the effects chain window. By default, we see the effects over here on the left side, and we can add them or remove them down over here. But if we want to put this at the top, go to our preferences, scroll down to plugins, and then we can choose show effects chain buttons above the effects list. So now we see that over here. So we can add it from here or remove them at the top instead of the bottom. And we could also move everything over here to the right side. We could choose Show effects list on right side of effects chain. And now we see it over here. So we can have it on the top or the bottom or the right or the left. And we can put it back by deselecting these two options. And now they're back to the left side with this on the bottom. Now in Reaper 6, they've also added a track wiring view. So if we go up here to the view menu, we could choose track wiring right here. That opens up this dialog where we could see each track separately in their wiring. By default, they're all set up to master, which we could deselect to take them out of the master parent send or put them back. We can move them around as well. Let's name our tracks to make this easier. Call this one drums, guitar. And reverb. Now we can see the different tracks over here. We can move them around to organize them, but we could also create sends from here. Instead of setting them up by drag and dropping them from here, like the drums to the reverb, creates a send, which we could see over here. Do another one from the guitar to the reverb. And that shows up here as well, or we could delete them. Right from here, hold on the PC, 
option on the Mac to delete those sends, or we can create them from this window. Just drag the plus sign from here and drop it and create sends right from the track wiring window. We could also delete them from here, alt on the PC, option on the Mac. And we could also change where they're being sent to. So if we want to send the drums to three and four instead, we could just do it right from here. Send the guitar to five and six right here. Now that's set up to different inputs on the reverb track. And again, we could delete them that easily. And if there's too many of them to see at once, you could just collapse them like this and move them around to make them easier to see. It just makes it easier to see the track wiring in a whole project all at once. Now they've also changed a few things in the MIDI editor. So let's create a MIDI item right here and double click it. And here we could see the MIDI editor. We could draw in some notes, see the velocities down here. But we could also change how the velocities show up. Let's say there's a few notes over here at different sizes. It gets kind of hard to see which note is which over here. But we could see it clearer if we right click over here, go to the options menu, go to the velocity lane, and choose show note length in velocity lane. And if we choose this, we can see the length of our notes in the velocity lane, making it a lot easier to see how long each note is. So with this example over here, if the velocities are different, we can see which note is which and adjust them accordingly. Now they've also changed how we see or view continuous controller information. So let's switch this to the mod wheel. Now we can draw animation and it's going to look like a typical envelope in Reaper. Just draw it in and it shows up more like this. Or just draw it in by hand, hold down shift to create new points, and very easily adjust that information like a typical Reaper envelope. A lot easier than how it was before with those bars. And one other thing I should mention is now on each track in Reaper, we can go to the routing and we can readjust the playback time offset. Typically, you're not going to need this, but if you want to create a delay, maybe one guitar compared to another, we can just delay it right from here. Instead of using a plugin, make it later or earlier. But where it's really useful is when dealing with MIDI sounds that have a slower attack. They tend to sound late, no matter how you quantize them. But now we can just shift them a little earlier. It's not going to shift on the timeline. It's just going to play back a bit earlier. So we could hear it a bit earlier on those slow strings or pads to put it in time with the other tracks in our project. Now there's a whole bunch of Reaper 6 improvements that we're not going to go over in this video. We just covered the major ones. If you want to look deeper, go to the Reaper website right here, go to download user guide and choose what's new in Reaper 6. So for now, that's what's new in Reaper 6. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.